riding the waves of Taylor Dent's game. And that's exactly what, that's his only option. It's not, he can't overpower Taylor Dent. He's just gotta wait for Taylor to beat himself. Leighton Hewitt successfully defending his title at Queens Club prior to Wimbledon, beat Pete Sampras. Tim Henman, as we mentioned earlier, did it in the same day because of rain, forcing uh, two matches on the final day. There we go, just long. So a quick game thus far for Leighton Hewitt to take a 5-2 lead in this third set and to really firmly take command of this match. just had a very intensive conversation with himself during the break. You know, he gets an expression on his eyebrows saying, yeah, that, those three serves in a row weren't so bad. I mean, it's not as bad as I think it is out here. However, he is trailing 5-2 in the third set, one apiece. And he really needs to hold on to this service game. You can just see Leighton Hewitt feeling it right now. I mean, just look at that. I mean, there's about a foot in the racket of Leighton Hewitt in that return. That's all he needed. Just playing the backboard. Love 13. Another double fall by Dent. You know, Marv, Dent had 30 winners in the first two sets. And this set, only five and four of them coming from aces. <laughs> That's six. 15 30. Percentage play. Even if Hewitt goes cross court 14, with that shot, 15. that would give Dent more time to run across and cover it. So you'd want to cover the line first. You can always get to the cross court when a lot easier. Oh, oh Dent surprised. Dent thought that serve was out. That's why he didn't even make a move for that volley. He is. Bonus for Hewitt. So they're at deuce. <laughs> Hewitt having a little Advantage chuckle there, there after framing that return. It's a bit of a perfectionist. There's two frames in a row, but on grass, you're going to get a fair bit of that inconsistent bounce coming at you, unlike a hard court. about inconsistent bounces. You're not going to see professional tennis players whiff yes. a whole lot of passing shots. This one ticks the tape, and that is a clean miss. Advantage, then.
So Chandler Dent holds and hangs in in this third set. Hewitt leads by five games to three. So now Hewitt to serve for two sets to one lead. Taylor Dent going to need to put some pressure on Hewitt right now, try and get back to the basics of what he was doing in the first set coming in when he gets the opportunity and making those approach shots. Oh, Leighton Hewitt's actually lost his footing. Taylor Dent not able to take advantage. 15 love. Well, nothing Dent can do about that. A fine serve, carving it right up the middle. Dent needs some help right here. Because he's not helping himself. And Leighton Hewitt, I have to admire Leighton Hewitt. He's such a competitor. Well, he withstood. A terrible first set. And certainly the suspension because of the rain helped turn things around. He is now serving for the set. And that's a good save of a set point for Taylor Dent. And he's still staring at two 40, more 50. to come from the racket of Leighton Hewitt. It's a lovely volley. It's a lot of what we saw in the first set. Haven't seen enough of them since for Taylor Dent. Be careful. He's had two set points. And, well, you don't want to lose. You don't want to drop your serve here, and all of a sudden Taylor Dent gets to serve to say in the set. Starting to pick his serve up a little bit. You want to close this out right here, right now. Takes a two-set to one lead. All right, thank you, Ernie. And back here on center court where Leighton Hewitt has taken over against Taylor Dent after Dent opened up with a 6-1 first set. Oh, Hewitt starting to hit his stride a little bit now. There's nothing wrong with the second serve. Everything's right with that return. A short angle. The off forehand. Hewitt is up two sets to one there. 30 all. So now Taylor. He's got a point to start out on top in this set. Something interesting at the end of the yes. last set. I hadn't haven't seen this from Leighton Hewitt before, but as he wins the set, he gives this little sign right here, which is Visht. That is a Swedish thing that Mats Vilander, Peter Lundgren, those guys used to do when they won big points. And I don't know where he got that. I imagine that's in the, the memory books, somewhere in his brain, watching those matches as a youngster. It's not an Aussie thing. Leighton trying to pull out all the stops. Firm volley by Dent. I never liked it because usually when I saw it, that was Edberg was drubbing me. I wasn't happy with the Visht. 
but here's Layton who did not wear the baseball cap during the first set and through the early portion of the second to the rain delay. Well, Hello, Taylor. Welcome yeah, back yeah. to the match. That volley looked exactly like we saw in the first set. First game, fourth set. We'll talk about Leighton Hewitt and just how steady he has been since he's come to the tour. Winning the tournament just in his hometown at age 16, 17, and moving all the way up to number five in the world, just on tour for a few short years. You have to think that if he stays healthy, this guy's going to be around. He really is the Michael Chang for this generation. He's a scrapper. He's not the most physically imposing guy out there, but he is a warrior. We got an early taste of Leighton Hewitt and the U.S. Davis Cup team going up against Australia a few summers ago in Boston. I was playing Todd Martin, Pete Sampras, and Leighton was just on the team that year for the first time, and he came out, took out Todd Martin convincingly. And he's really been a clutch Davis Cup performer ever since. 15 all. This is nice aggression by Dent. Easy with the volley. This year, Hewitt going down to Brazil, taking out both Brazilian clay court players on their home turf. As that one clips the tape, taking out Melagini, who's a solid clay court player. And then, of course, Gustavo Kirtan, number one player in the world, and clearly the number one on clay, who's conspicuous in his absence here at Wimbledon this year. Man for service. But Hewitt, clearly destined to win Grand Slams. You don't win those big matches in Davis Cup like he's won. And choke under pressure when you get to these moments. Oh, Dent laying into this forehand. Maybe he's finding the range again. Changer, where you asked me about Dent's high-risk game and if I thought it was a game that could consistently win. And the way I see it is he needs to taper it in a little bit. He needs to kind of trim a little bit of the fat off of the game, maybe not go quite so big all the time because he'll get exposed against a player like Leighton Hewitt Again, over the course of a three out of five set match. Plays high risk at all times. And it, it looks great when you're on, as we saw in the first set. In two out of three sets, oh, you can get hot and you can steamroll. And there's nothing to say that if we didn't have a rain delay here that the score, scoreboard wouldn't be a bunch of breadsticks up there. But it's gone the other way after that rain delay. And the high risk is uh, you have to really be on. And if you want to be a consistent player, you, you have to bring it in, control it somehow. Control your aggression. Sixteen in the ace column. Taylor Depp. Marv, the best news for Taylor Den is that you can learn how to control power, but you can't teach size, and he's got size, and he's got power. All he needs to do is just pay attention to what his father and Elliot Telcher are telling him. Keep working hard. His dad, Phil Dent, 
went to the finals, the Australian and 1974 semis of the French. Late 70s, made it to the quarterfinals here at Wimbledon in 1977. Lost to John McEnroe, five sets. Who's that? It's a They're fellow we're constantly hearing on the air, be it in the United States on NBC or on the BBC here in Great Britain. Hard to believe the BBC will let Mac have at it, but they do. 15 for... In danger for Taylor Dent here, 15-30, loose on that backhand volley. And this game is so much fun to watch when it's on, but when it goes off, it can really go off. I wonder if a conversation with someone like Andre Agassi wouldn't do a world of good for Taylor Dent. In terms of changing his approach? Just in terms of understanding his game a little better. I know Andy Roddick Sergio. spoke of this year, Kivas game coming in on a rain delay in the middle of one of his matches against Pavel, Romania, and Andre said, listen, you don't always have to go for the 140 mile an hour serve. You can just kick it sometimes and surprise a guy, change it up a little bit, mix your game up. And words from your peers sometimes strike much deeper than words from your coaches. Andre, if you're, well, you're not listening because you're not in Vegas, but if you hear this tape, take some time out and encourage the youngster. American Tennis needs Taylor Dent out here on tour. We need as many male players in the draw as possible. So Taylor Dent able to hold. We'll be right back. Earlier we were talking about Taylor Dent's dad, Phil, who has distinguished tennis lineage uh, back in 1977. His father went up against John McEnroe in the quarterfinals here at uh, Wimbledon. And McEnroe taking it in five sets. Winning 6-4 in the fifth. Phil Dent was ranked as high as seventh in the world at, uh, at one point. Also, he was a U.S. Open mixed doubles champion teaming with Billie Jean King back in 1976. It was amazing to me watching those matches on tape and just seeing the difference in sheer power and size Love that the team. guys on tour have Please, now. Ladies and gentlemen, no flash photography during play. Thank you. The request made regarding the, uh, the flash photography. No flash. This match moving up on two hours as we approach 7.30 in London. Leighton Hewitt up two sets to one. For service. Taking a look at the new addition to the camera lineup from the BBC this year. A camera on a string that runs behind the court. in position to level 40, this set. 15. And a couple games apiece, 40-15 for Hewitt. You, know, you always look like you jump so high on this court. They have the cameras below the level of the course. They're shooting up at you. 
Not to say that Pete Sampras can't get up in the air, but boy, he looks like he's springing up there when he goes for his jump overhead. Two games so. Well, they're two apiece. Camera closing in on the gentleman in the red hat there. Darren Cahill, or Killer, as he was known on the tour. Fine player in his own right from Australia, from Leighton's hometown of Adelaide. A career cut short, sadly, by several knee operations. At one point, he was uh, 22nd in the world. Very solid, all-court player, Cahill. Good in singles, good in doubles. And very good for this man, Leighton Hewitt, bringing a lot of experience, tour experience, training experience, and such a luxury to have your coach be from your hometown so you don't have to travel out when you're off the tour. Definitely found his mark with the return of serves here. There's no answer for that one. 132 miles an hour out wide, which is a just enormous number going over the high part of the net. And remember, the ball's here at Wimbledon, heavier than most places on tour. We please, we please, we please. Well, uh -huh. a visitor <laughs> here at center court. It's not Hamish the Hawk, is it? Uh, Hamish is protecting. Where is Hamish? He should be taking care of business out here. <laughs> Hamish is a... Of course, as you well know, Marv, the hawk that the All England Club employs to keep pigeons away from the grounds. But he's not much, he's, he's not really much of a fighter. Hamish is independently wealthy, I think, <laughs> at this, this point. <laughs> Does have a nice stipend from the All England Club. Probably about the same as the players per diem here for the two weeks. Are you back to complaining about that again? I, I remember last year. I'm no longer a player. My per diem from TNT is quite sufficient. Oh, is it? Thanks for asking, though. Is it low? Is, is that really a, a major complaint? I'm talking about w uh, Wimbledon per diem. No, no, the per diems are very sufficient, generally speaking, plenty yeah. to cover. Yeah. Hotel rooms and food for a couple of weeks, and now... So when we talk about the next generation of players in American tennis to follow the Pete Sampras's and the Andre Agassi's, these are the three guys that we're talking about. Of course, Andy Roddick is the one who has the asterisk by his name in the third round here. Taylor Dent, Marty Fish, also youthful, also big games. Marty Fish getting into the tournament here as a lucky loser, losing in the third round of qualifying and then uh, not playing his best tennis in the first round matchup against Nicolas Escudé of France. Taylor Dent has shown us flashes of brilliance out here today. And we know he has a lot of ability. Just waiting for him to put it all together like Andy Roddick is doing at the moment. It's a lot of pressure for players to be under the gun to, to compete against the record. Players like Agassi and Sampras and Chang and Todd Martin and Malavia Washington. We've had so many players in America over the past decade who have been in major finals and won them or lost, but just always around at the end. And our fans back home are used to winners, and frankly, we're going to need these guys to pick up the slot. Happy with that. But he's still on serve here. Could 
sneak a little break and get right back in here, get back into a fifth set. Under 12 miles per hour on that serve. Leighton Hewitt, 40 15. Darren Cahill again. Well, that'll go wide. Then motioning up into the box, looking at his coach, going, well, you know, I came to the net. Is that what I should, should I be doing that? And not really supposed to get coaching, but there are some understood signals and nods that players can kind of get away with. And he would hold serve to bring it to three games apiece. Leighton Hewitt looking very comfortable now. First set he looked anything but. Rain delay helping him out. Now Taylor Dent will serve three all with new balls. Taylor Dent winning his opening match this past Tuesday. With Sergi Ruggera of Spain, straight sets victory. And has been playing very well as of late, although it has not really met anyone at this particular level. <laughs> challenger in qualifying events. Earlier in the year, some big wins, upset over Magnus Norman, Wayne Ferreira. Court victories. Well, those are easy to understand after you watch the first set out here. You, under, you think it's a two out of three set match. Taylor Dent gets hot for an hour and a half. He's going to have huge victories. <laughs> He's going to have to back them up day in and day out. Well, that's a beautiful rally. High number of double faults comes from taking risk on that second serve. Two sets to one. Crowd getting into it in this fourth set. They like the power game of Taylor Dent. They definitely do. And Leighton Hewitt with his fifth base. Well, they showed that straight away in this match when Dent missed with a 145 mile an hour serve and got an ovation. In between first and second right. serves. People like to see things that they're not capable of, and there are about seven people that can do <laughs> do that in the on the planet. 
15 all. So Dent and Alex see him trying to move around and hop around after that double fall, trying to get something going. People talk about the seventh game being such a crucial game. I, I feel like the eighth game is, is much more important because if it's four or three, you get a break of serve, all of a sudden you're serving for the set. Oh. 13, 15. He knows that was a bad mistake. But you just have to forget about it. It's 15, 30, you can still string a couple good shots together, and get a break. Cool as a cucumber, Leighton Hewitt. Getting towards the end of this, this set. Hewitt trying to close the match out and just not a lot of expression until he really needs it. Great set, 6-3, six, 6-2. Six, and we're on center court. A match that has gone two hours, 12 minutes, plus a rain delay. He would have said with himself, knew he had dead. Takes a peek, not real happy with that call. How can anyone be expected to see it though? 136 on the gun. Well, some, at some point, everyone's just fending for themselves out there. The guy down the center service line who's calling out line left. has to not only make the call, but get out of the way. That's the fastest serve that Taylor Dent has made in the box today. 41. And that has three great shots there. Very nice serve here. Very solid return. We'll, we'll call 13, it four 15. shots, actually. That's a great volley. And the better passing shot. Nice clean tennis here late in the match. You mentioned 141 fastest in the box at 142 miles per hour in the opening set, but that was a, a fault. That will go long, so Dent sneaks out ahead 5 4. Hewitt will be back to stay in the set. Taylor Dent up 5-4 in the fourth. And Leighton Hewitt up two sets to one. Match miles run. Looking like Dent's making a little more track work out there than Hewitt. Goes the racket. Gets in here. 
There's a solid point. He gets the overhead. He's not going to miss many of these. That's right in the top of the tape. And that last statistic showing how many miles these guys would run if we put their steps that they've put together in the match on end. And somewhat surprisingly, Taylor Dent doing more of the legwork out there. Oh, nice angle. Dent wants the call. He's not going to get it. And the more I think about that, it makes sense, actually, because Dent is doing some of his running forwards and backwards. Hewitt merely going side to side. And that ball, I'm afraid, was out. And that's a bad call. Dent had a reason to be upset. In effect, Hewitt's game is more efficient. He's going side to side. Dent's kind of moving all over the place. Oof. The whiff. 30 15. Now, well, one bad call later and could be 15-30 and two points for the set for Taylor Dent, but he's going to have to dig deep. That call is in the past. and a look at the players' box from Leighton Hewitt. 40-15. Gets Dent out of position and then accelerates right through that one, lifting both legs off the ground. Now 40-15 to tie it at 5-all. They are five apiece. In the fourth set. Five games all. What? And we're center court at Wimbledon. Marv Albert and Jim Courier. Ernie Johnson. Oh, back on hand in the studio. We'll hear from him later on. Making the journey back from the NBA draft in New York City. Taylor Dent here got a foot call called. It was a center line foot call, footfall call, which is extremely unusual. I bring, I bring my back foot way up. One line the Well, we're not going to see anything from this angle. Before I even start my motion, and I have to be over, it's a footfall. Yeah. What if I'm here when I'm hitting? That doesn't matter. It's like if you are one in five. Well, the umpire explaining to Taylor, it doesn't matter where you are when you hit the serve. If you start with your right leg crossing the center line, there you see his right leg way well behind his left. If he starts to the left of that center service line, that's a foot fault, no matter where his right foot is when he serves, and that's a double fault. And that's a very important double fault. How will that affect the serving here by Dan? Well, he's just got to make sure that he's a little further right and not risk another foot fault call. First one of the match. Oh, oh Hewitt seizing the moment. Just manhandles his 128-mile-an-hour serve. Just love thanks 30. for coming. That's a winner. And it is love 30. With five apiece in this fourth set. So Dent well right of the center service line on that serve and uses the extra angle to take it out wide, the service winner. Uh, another gorgeous return by Leighton Hewitt. Look at this, Hewitt just firm 15, with that. 40. That serve was 129 miles an hour. Oh, Hewitt only had seven tenths of a second to respond to that serve. Think he's got some skill? Oh. 
That is called out. Just out. Taylor Dent's heart probably he stopped. He was concerned. He thought that he made a mistake letting it go. Well, he saves one break point, but here's another. for Australian Leighton Hewitt to complete this come from behind effort. He can win the match there right go. here after breaking Taylor Dent. approach here and all he's got to do is lay this in the open court he knew it but sometimes the easy shots become difficult just a little casual with that this is no time for casualness oh. and a double fall by here you know, Hewitt's not going to give you too many opportunities, and you really have to make sure that anytime you've got a ball you can knock off for a winner, you take good care of it. shots were all falling in early in this match and through the course of the match Leighton Hewitt has just worn Taylor Dent down. Brings it to Deuce. Nice approaches here. Continuing to put Hewitt under pressure. That's a shot that we've seen Hewitt make today. And on match point, that one sails long. such a crucial juncture. It's not the Leighton Hewitt I know. And now, Dan, a break point. Send us into a tiebreaker and how quickly things can change. 
Oh, does this point mean anything? Ladies and gentlemen, so it's on to a tiebreak. Dead to serve. Marv, I was preparing my closing statement, Ooh. but oh, this jury is still not out. First player to seven points must win by two. Takes the tiebreak. And you can sense new life to Taylor Dent. Oh, I mean, the guy was all but buried one zero five five points ago, and now he's 1-0 in the tiebreak. There's nothing for him to lose. There never has been, but really nothing to lose now. He was already out of this tournament a mere three minutes ago, and now look at Leighton Hewitt. A little different look on his face all of a sudden. He needs to put a serve in play here. It's been a bizarre match. <laughs> Taylor Dent Two, zero, opening eight. up with the blistering serve. Won the first set, 6 1. The rain delay certainly took its toll. Leighton Hewitt came roaring back. Oh, Dent thinking that ball might go out. Got Two, handcuffed eight. there. Couldn't get out of the way. Still the mini break for Taylor Dent. I'm starting to wonder, is there a middle gear for Taylor Dent? Is it all or nothing? This guy's either making a lot of great shots, missing a lot of great shots. Of course, he did get a wonderful hand from Leighton Hewitt to get that break of serve and get into this tiebreaker. Great opportunity. 142 miles an hour. That's the biggest serve he's made in the box today. Feel the adrenaline. And that uh, ties <coughs> the fastest serve of the year. On tour, both by this man. Yeah. Oh, and that's 144. Can we take it up a notch? Can I get a witness from the congregation? That is the fastest serve of the year. For one dent. And able to turn it on, raise it up during the tiebreak. Well, maybe a touch too much adrenaline, but he still Three, got spring two, in the step. Dent. 4-2. He's just happy to be alive. And all of a sudden, Leighton Hewitt. Definitely a little worry on his face. We saw it in the first set. Haven't seen it really since that rain delay. A little furrow in the brow. serves here to send this thing into a fifth set right at eight o'clock.
shakes to Dent. A champ for Tanner Dent. We're headed to a fifth set. It is on to the fifth set as Taylor Dent took the tie break against Leighton Hewitt convincingly by the count of seven to two. Here's Taylor, 20 years old. Out of Newport Beach, California. Here is a qualifier, Lake Hewitt. Number five seed, 20 Time. years old. Big, huge favorite in Australia out of Adelaide. Boy, this match taking some turns. This match was all said and done not more than five minutes ago, and all of a sudden. Taylor Hewitt Dent hit some really nice approach shots. How about going 144 miles per hour in a tiebreak scenario? How about Taylor Dent coming into his first fifth set of his career as well? I mean, just, ugh, the superlatives. Uh, he's pumped now. And, you know, I mean, we get on the guy when he's making bad shots. Love him there. Give him credit. I mean, he's just, he's all over the place. Taylor's feeling it right now. Thinking everything he's touching is gold. It is just past 8 o'clock here in London. Match that has now gone two hours, 35 minutes. It's a good break for Leighton Hewitt because Third all Dent had to do was just tap that over his head. Anywhere. Just a little excited. About a foot long. together right now because there's no question where the momentum is. So deal. And Taylor Dent serving the ball up in the 140 mile an hour range. He's starting to hit his spots. The last thing Leighton Hewitt can afford to do is drop his opening service game of the fifth set. And Leighton had difficulties with the serve in the fourth set. Chance for Four Hewitt days, to take the opening game. Change sides. Change sides. Dent sitting down. <laughs> Then just took a little seat, and the umpire had to remind him, you know what? You have to play on. Yes. All right. Dent all of a sudden finding his serve in the fourth set. Even so, 66% really should have been out of this match. Hewitt breaking him, serve for the match, but then breaking himself in turn. <laughs> deep in the court for Dent to try and get into the net because you don't come in on good stuff against Hewitt. He's going to burn you every time. <laughs> you know, 
Marv, my question is how long is this adrenaline burst going to last for Taylor Dent? <laughs> yeah, he's he's going to have to play on that emotion and keep going and hope to get a break of serve somewhere in here because we don't have a tie-break situation in the fifth set. We have seen major swings of emotion on the part of both Dent and Hewitt. That's a sensational return by here just to keep it alive. Are you kidding me? 137 miles an hour, and he returned that one with interest. I mean, that is just beautiful. And then look, Love peace 14. of mind, presence of mind, line it up down the line. That's a lot of lines in one sentence. I apologize. Love 40. You can see where the emotion has carried Dan Hewitt. Let me hear it all. New post is. As he takes a 2-0 lead in this fifth set. And he's jumping for joy, looking right in the direction of the player's box where his parents, his coach. Oh, man. I think he's in pretty good shape. Still got plenty left in the tank. Now we'll get some new balls to fire at Taylor Dent. And now can Taylor Dent find another pocket of adrenaline somewhere in his body to get back in this match? I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> we mentioned this earlier, 13-0 record on grass court this year, including his first round victory over Gustafsson of Sweden. Hewitt coming forward for his string saver, playing with gut string that puts a little piece of plastic in between the gut so the friction won't fray the string. He wants to keep this racket going until the end of the match, doesn't want to change. for service. He's feeling good with that racket in his hand. No time for a new stick right now. Net for service. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Marv, is Hewitt going to give Dent another chance? Is he going to break himself again? We saw a memorable match here last night between Pete Sampras and Barry Cowan of Great Britain. Four to nothing. <laughs> and uh, this one is turning into an epic. This one is just seesawing back and forth, and that, that second serve catches the line and out of reach. Oh. Last night's match, Sampras nearing defeat against the, uh, the wild card, Cowan, pulling himself together. Looks like Hewitt is pulling himself together as well right here, taking a three-love lead. Final set. Three days, three love, final set. Leighton Hewitt has taken 12 out of the last 14 points against Taylor Dent, has turned it on here in the fifth set. Up three love. Three love, one break. This after having two match point opportunities. <laughs> Fourth set. Ned for service. Oh. Oh. That's what Taylor did. 
Dent needs to continue to do to hold serve. Now, breaking Hewitt's serves, it's a whole other question, but he's got to focus right now on at least getting on the board in this set. Two breaks of serve. That'll pretty much wrap this match up for Leighton Hewitt. And Dent knew it before that ball even hit the net. He flipped around and was walking back. <laughs> Here comes the comes another pigeon. <laughs> That's the second sighting of this match. Well, they heard about the five setter going on. They want to check it out. Oops. Dead serve going into the corner where the expensive seats are. And that serve going to the net. And big, big, big danger for Dent right now. And a big number of double faults. Number 16 for Dent. Big number for Hewitt as well, 10. And, uh, The pigeons coming to check out the conclusion here. Oh man, oh man. 134 miles an hour out wide. The other way wide. 40, 40. There may be some humor in the stands right now, but there's none of it on the court. These guys are focused in. You don't play for two hours and 45 minutes to laugh at a bird coming across the court. These guys spent a lifetime trying to get to this court right here. This crowd easily amused. <laughs> and the player's not easily distracted. Well, take that back. It is now a 3-1 edge for Hewitt. And his fifth set. Dent taking the first set. Six to one with an array of dazzling serves. Hewitt took the second and third sets. And then Dent right back, coming from behind, and then taking the tie break seven to two, bringing us to this fifth set. from both players. Dent has to keep forcing the issue to have any chance of breaking serve. And what more can you do? You put that right in the corner and your opponent just comes up with a down the line pass. Man, 21 winners. And that's demoralizing for Dent because he knows he hit a good shot there and he got no reward for it. Quickly 30 love for Hewitt. Got the idea of Leighton Hewitt to just run all day long? Absolutely. You know, he does a lot of training in sand dunes in Australia, so the grass will feel uh, like a treadmill to him. Bringing you right up to date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there. I see something I can't quite understand. 
Hewitt apologizing for hitting the net cord, but remember back in the first set when he took the ball, a sitter right at Taylor Dent. There was no apology when he tried to take his head off. Oh, the contradictions of tennis. recommend a drop shot against Leighton Hewitt too often, but if you're going to hit one, that's the one you want. That's a short angle, and there's nowhere 14, else for him 15. to go. And Dent does well to get there and cover that. You see pretty good percentage by Hewitt, clearly only coming in when he has advantage. Dent coming in pretty much at all times. Ah! Oof. Yeah. Well, they say, clean ace, 4-1, Hewitt. He will lose by four games to one, final set. Back at Wimbledon, Taylor dead. Down a break here in the fifth set. Leighton Hewitt with the commanding lead. Trying to wrap it up. It has been a wild match, which began with Taylor dead taking the first set 6-1. And that's 138 miles per hour. 15 Dent at his 19th pace. Microcosm of the match in these two points. First set, saw so Taylor didn't hit a lot of big serves. Then after the rain delay that happened at one all in the second set, Dent, a few more errors creeping into his game. And Hewitt holding the line, playing solid tennis. Which is really Hewitt's story all day today until the moment he went to surf for the match in the fourth set. He was up 40-15 and lost four straight points. It is 15.30. Trouble. And there are two break points for Leighton Hewitt to take a 5-1 lead in the fifth set. And there is one of his best shots, clearly the best lobber on tour. And you see Dent just hang his head. The minute Leighton got that ball up in the air, Dent knew he was facing two break points. And saves the first one. Again, an amazing return of serve there by Leighton Hewitt. 30-14. He just keeps coming and keeps coming. Two hands on his racket and try and take that ball up the line. Choosing instead to go with the one-hander and go right Deuce. behind Dan. I mean, he was there in plenty of time. Anytime you have an opportunity to pass with two hands, you get a little more on the ball. You really should. And that was too uh, that was a bad decision by Hewitt. Now back at Deuce. <laughs> Stretch by Dent. Again, drawing Hewitt into the net. Advantage Dent. That time, no choice but to go to the one-hander for Hewitt. And Dent's got the line covered. <laughs> and Taylor Dent. Dent still alive. Able to hold. 
Huey leads by four games. And this is where it gets dangerous for Leighton Hewitt because in your mind, if you're Leighton Hewitt, you're thinking, okay, I've got a couple break point chances to close this match, and I'm done. There's no way I'm losing at 5-1. And then you lose it, and you had a real chance at 30-40, and you didn't get it. Easy to let down in this game, and then all of a sudden, it's very complicated. And Taylor Dent needs left. to help himself out now by keeping the ball in play and just seeing if Leighton Hewitt's going to perhaps feel the pressure of not having broken. Get his groove on right there. Watch the pump. That is Leighton Hewitt operating at his best when he lets his emotions out. Look at that shot. Full oh, on the run. Fifth set. Almost three hours into the match. And Dent on the stretch. Flicks the wrist. Hewitt was not looking for the down the line. I think Hewitt thought he was just going to flag that one out. Wasn't really covering anything but the middle. Led for service. Fifth set. Again, Hewitt. Leighton Hewitt up five to two. Leighton Hewitt with a five two lead. And the fifth set, and again, facing the serve of Taylor Dent. Gotcha. Oh, nice recovery. Maybe not. Now, the question is, did Hewitt cross the net when he hit that shot? It appeared he stopped in time. Look at that, just right off the top of the frame. Love Funny to see the ball in camera there. This one almost bounces back to the other side, but Hewitt may able to put it away and control his momentum and not touch the net. <laughs> Had he touched the net, that would have been Taylor Dent's point while the ball was still in play. <laughs> Full foot up. Not a bad second serve. No. Nope. Leighton Hewitt controlling his eyes, looking at his strings. Just trying to keep in focus here. He knows he's very close to closing this match out. He thought he had it closed out back in the fourth set. Two match points. Dent came from behind, took it in the tiebreak. <laughs> 15 30. Well, that is double fault, number 18 for Dent. And Dent's clearly just felt like he had to go for extra today against such a fine returner in Leighton Hewitt. Invariably, the mistakes creep in when you have to play a little closer to the edge. <laughs> Dent right back with ace number 21. Man, this has been a fun one to watch, though.
recovery by Hewitt. Oh, and that's just going to be called out. What a point. Oh, just point and counterpoint by the attacker so and the counterpuncher. And that sends it to match point again for Hewitt. That just out in one of the points of the tournament thus far. Match point number three for Leighton Hewitt. Marge, Marv, 138 mile an hour. First serve, down match point, and a big overhead as well. lays it out there. I mean, clearly, if he gets that ball in his racket, he's got the whole court to work with, so not a bad play to give it a little roll in the, in the grass. And they will play on. Taylor Dick holding serve. Again, again. So, Leighton Hewitt Will serve. He's up 5 3. Three in this five, five good set. Three. This match is down. Down three hours and four minutes. Beautiful tennis under pressure by Taylor Dent. When he needs it most, he needs this game to stay alive in this match. And every shot he hit in this point Love is dear. with authority. Continues the theme of going for it under pressure here, missing with that one. Made for service. Remember back in the fourth set, Hewitt serving for the match, not able to convert to match points. Just in case the lineswoman didn't get it, he knows every point counts as well. He's on top of it also. Can't really tell from that replay. So Taylor did telling himself, come on, man, come on. Stay together. And once again, Leighton Hewitt is one point away. 40-15. This is fourth match point. We've been here before. A dramatic victory in the battle of 20-year-olds. What a terrific match as Lee Hewitt has defeated American One, six, seven, five, in six, five three, sets. Six, seven, six, three. Saluting the crowd 
We're staying out there after the rain delay, looking up at his parents. Wade Hewitt is nothing without his heart. He showed his heart out there, staying in there. It would have been very easy for him to get discouraged after having the fourth set in his hands. A couple match points. You see Taylor Dent waving to the crowd. A little upset, surely. But he has a lot to be proud of. And Leighton Hewitt, who just saluted his parents, Glenn and Charlotte, for the first time has won here on center court at Wimbledon. And very dramatically falling down to the court. I mean, he's definitely feeling it. Feeling the pressure to perform out there on the world's largest stage. And he's finally come through and won his first match on that court. Take a look at what Leighton Hewitt has left after that dramatic victory over Taylor Dent. Well, he's got a clay court specialist in Eunice, Illinois. That should be a fairly much, much easier match, that's for sure. And uh, down at the bottom, he's got a couple Frenchmen, Escudé and Grosjean. Grosjean, we'll remember, was the guy who took out Andre Agassi at the French Open in the quarterfinals this year. A nifty little player. Both of those guys, King crafty Escudé and Grosjean, but you have to like Hewitt in this section coming through. And if he gets through all of this mess, Andre Agassi awaits down at the bottom of the draw. Much more tennis to come. We'll see Patrick Rafter, Andre Agassi, and Ernie Johnson standing by back in the studio. Back with more in a moment. Taylor, a disappointing end result, but you've got to be proud of the way you played out there today. Yeah, um, the first, first, fourth, and fifth sets, I have no complaints about how I played. I thought my intensity was good and my concentration was good. Just the second and third set, I, I went out there and uh, let down a little bit, so could have been better. When you get off to such a good start like that, um, were you ever aware that Leighton Hewitt is not a particular fan of Sensor Court? Had you read or heard anything that he you know, doesn't really like the atmosphere, thinks he's a bit too subdued maybe? Um, I didn't read anything about that. Just... Now, when did you feel that it was slipping away from you in that fourth set and you, you battled your way back in there? Uh, actually, from the middle of the fourth set on, I thought, you know, I was still in the match and I was still, you know, uh, hanging in there. But uh, I just, like I said, the second and third sets, it felt like it was just slipping away and I wasn't really as intense as I was in the first set. But, you know, once I got in the middle of the fourth set, I felt like, you know, I, I, I could hang in there. Was uh, the, the drop in intensity anything to do with that rain delay? I don't think so. Um, could have been giving me too much time to think about what was going on, but maybe I'm sitting on the changeover at 6-1 thinking, you know, you know, this is all right, and just take it easy. But I, I don't think the rain had too much to do with it. Now, can you try and describe to us what it's like, to some degree, to play somebody like Leighton Hewitt, who's such a great counter-puncher, but he's also so sort of feisty, fist-pumping, so into the into the match and uh, shouting himself, come on, come on, all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, when I get when I get into big points, I'm doing the same thing. So, I mean, I didn't really notice it. I mean, the crowd's so loud out there, you can't really hear anything when the point's over. And uh, people said that he was pumping his fist and jumping around and doing all this stuff. I didn't really notice any of it. I was too concentrated on what I was doing. Is that something you say you do it yourself? I mean, is that something you do at, uh, in the moment, and Leighton perhaps does in the moment, to, to G yourself up, or is it something you're aiming at the crowd to maybe get them on your side? Um, well, for me, it's just a reaction. You know, I'm just trying so hard to win that point, and when it you know, goes my way to big stage in the match, it's, I don't know, it just comes out. What does this do for you and your confidence? Because you've played on a, a major stage, the center court, given a great performance against one of the world's top players. Yeah, no, I mean, I've I've beaten some of the better players and I've given some of the better players, you know, run for their money. Uh, Confidence-wise, I've always thought that I've had the, you know, the game to be up there. It's just um, as soon as I, you know, can keep my concentration going for the duration of the match, you know, not just one set and then fall asleep for two sets. I mean, I'm not saying that I fell asleep, but, you know, just keep my concentration Keep it going Keep and it maybe there. make that next step. What what is the next step? The next goal for you is it top? Do you see yourself top twenty, top ten? What is it that you set yourself? Um, you know, I, I try not to set goals. I try and you know just do the best I can each match and see where I go. 
Your dad was such a great player. Um, what do you think he'll say to you? Have you spoken to him? Already? Yeah, I saw him in the locker room. He said, you know, I'm, I'm coming on. Just uh, keep going. Well done. Good performance. Thank you very much. Hewitt into the United States, 20 years old, against 20-year-old Leighton Hewitt of Australia. There's match point. And that really is a, a demonstration of the emotion that was shown all day in a three-hour and five-minute match on center court here at Wimbledon. And for Leighton Hewitt, that was a special day because that's the first match you've won on center court. You had lost to Boris Becker there. You had lost to Jan Michael Gamble there. And there was a lot of talk. Uh, by the way, Jim Curry were joining us, not just eavesdropping, but joining us here with this, uh, this discussion. Had, has, was that on your mind? W was it becoming a thing mentally with you at all? Uh, not really. You know, maybe a little bit before the match. But once I got out there, you know, I was just going out there and going for it. Um, yeah, it's hard to block it out, though. He was on fire the first set in a bit. 6-1, uh, yeah. <laughs> setting a break up before I knew it. Uh, you know, I was really struggling out there, and then I had a little bit of a rain delay out there. Got my composure back in the locker room, went out there, and had to go for it a little bit more. You know, I really, it's a hard court to play on, uh, you know, if you're a little bit negative out there, and I had to really get out there and be positive right from the start. How did you stay positive? Because in the fourth set, you had a couple of match points, and then... Jim, you watch this happen. A couple of double faults, and you know Jim Courier was was kind of shaking his head over the whole uh, well, proceedings. So there. unlike Leighton Hewitt, so unlike <laughs> you to, to to not close a match. You're so good at closing. You're such a clutch player. I mean, your Davis Cup results. You don't do what you've done in Davis Cup all over the world and not be able to handle the situation. And you were right there, and all of a sudden it just got away from me. Okay, so take me from sitting on the changeover to going out. What are you thinking in your head as you regroup? Yeah, well, it was hard. Uh, yeah, you know, I've really never been in that situation before, as you said. And, Point taken. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, you know, I'm starting to think that, you know, I'm going to be in the locker room having a massage in a minute, having a <laughs> shower. And uh, next thing I know, he he played an unbelievable tie break. You know, he was pumped up. The crowd was back with him. Um, you know, he was playing with a lot of emotion out there. And I had to sit down, and you know, I told myself, you know, this is one set. We're two sets all here. This is one set of good tennis. You know, to get into the third round of Wimbledon. Otherwise, you know, the year's over here at Wimbledon. And you know, that's what I told myself. I had to play one good set. I came out. Uh, struggled through my first service game, then caught fire in the second game. Um, you know, I hit a couple of the best returns I've ever hit, I think, in that game. Two backhands straight past him at net, and uh, you know, sort of put me on my way, and then uh, just had to hold my nerve and hold, hold serve for the rest of the set. And we were watching those returns and, and um, commenting, we're looking in slow motion as you hit those returns. The serves are coming in the 130s, and your backswing is from here to here. It's just like you're putting up a wall using his pace, is that really what it feels like to you? Pretty much, you can't do much else. Um, you know, not. you just got to try and block it back, and you know, that, that's all I was really trying to do out there. You know, you, you don't have time to think. Can um, you direct that, or are you just kind of hoping for the best at that you, point? Uh, yeah, you try to do a little bit, but I'll be lying. You know, there's a lot of guesswork out there, <laughs> and uh, you know, there, there's times when he's sitting those bombs, uh, you can't do anything about it, and it gets very frustrating. You're sitting there, and you know that you're a good returner, and you're sitting there, and these break points are coming, and they're just going by all the time. Um, in the fifth set, I had break points nearly every game. Yes, I'll put did. a different spin on a statistic here. Rather than say Taylor Dent set a Wimbledon record today by cranking out a serve of 144 miles an hour, you could say Leighton Hewitt faced the fastest stir serve of all time at Wimbledon, 144. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that was, uh, that's incredible stuff. And you talk about kind of the helpless feeling, but uh, how, do you, how do you prepare for a situation like that as we see that one? You can't do anything about it. Um, you know, there, there's a bit of guesswork, and you know, you got to, you, but you can't let your confidence get dented by that either. You, you got to bounce back, and you got to come out. And you know, I draw confidence from watching a guy like Andre Agassi, such a good returner, and he's played a guy like Pete Sampras so many times, or Mark Philippoussis. And I've seen a lot of those matches when I was growing up, and he, he'll get ace, but he, he just bounces back. He comes straight to the next side, and he, he forgets about that straight away. And that's what I try and model my my return against serve a little bit on Andre. You know, we saw something, and Jim was pointing it out today too. That you know, maybe it was the hat. You went with the hat that still has the, the French Open clay. I have, yeah, I, I picked that up. We're, we're seeing you in, in close up, and you've got the hat on backwards, and you can see just the spots of the clay on either side. And you know, take a look right there. You there can you see it. It, it. Obviously, you've got some attachment to this oh, hat. It's, yeah, it's a little bit of a favorite. Uh, I get mum to wash it tonight, and then she'll be back out on Saturday. <laughs> she'll be right back out. That's not all bad. Of a, all of a sudden, you're 14 and 0. You've won 14 straight matches on grass, including in getting ready for this. You beat on the same day Pete Sampras and, and Tim Henman. What did that do for you up here? 
Yeah, even though it's not Wimbledon, it's not a Grand Slam, you know, it was Queens and it was on a grass court, which th those guys' games are very suited to. Uh, you know, I went out there and I had a lot of confidence. I've played a lot of big Davis Cup ties on grass, which it, it hasn't been my favourite surface in the past, but I've had to adapt because of guys like Pat Raft and the Woodies and Philip Pousas play very well on grass. So I've sort of had to adapt my game to be able to play on grass. And, you know, I, I, I owe, you know, a lot of uh, time to playing on Davis Cup. That's why I'm starting to do a lot better on grass now. Um, obviously, with the wins over Sampras and Henman are fantastic. Let me talk about your style of play just for a second. The fact that, you know, you like to get the fans into it. You pump yourself up that way, too. Sometimes, and I'm talking not as a, as a competitor, as, as Jim could, but do you ever risk, you know, thinking the guy on the other side, I'm ticking him off with this, or, you know, it looked like you actually went after Taylor Dent at one point today yes, when you could have gone to the open, <laughs> when you could have gone to the open court. Yeah, oh, well, I'm not okay. I actually thought Taylor was going on the other side. I didn't oh, think it. I, I did I'm, not I'm, think. No, come on, Jim, a guy, I'm I did not fine. think a guy <laughs> could hit a shot like that and stand there. Why I, I you thought, apologize? come on. I didn't see you apologize. I went to, and he actually didn't look at me. So oh, no, I did go to a apologize. True story, right here from the That's it, mate. No, I, I read it wrong. I, I actually thought, you thought were going I, at him. no, I thought he was going to go the other side, and it was uh, it was strong, but it didn't pay off anyway. I didn't break that game. So. No, a little early intimidation. Let's look down the road a little bit for you at the rest of your draw here, and. Uh, and, and take me through it and tell me what you think, you know, of the next round, uh, Elenawi. Uh. Yeah, I've never played him before. Um, he's not a traditional grass court player, but, you know, he's obviously playing well. He beat uh, Vince Aguera in straight sets, I think, today. So, yeah, I'm going to have my hands full there. But, you know, hopefully if I can get through that one, uh, I get into sort of the business end of the tournament and sort of round of 16s there where, you know, a lot of the seeds are starting to get through and meet each other. And that's an interesting match, Escudé Grosjean, though. Um, two French guys. You know, I'd probably say Escudé's probably got the better suited game to grass, but Grosjean in Grand Slams this year has been uh, exceptional. So, you know, I, I'd probably have to say Grosjean's probably the favourite going into that one. What you say? Well, what about, let's take it one step further, if you get past those two guys, let's take you down into the bottom of the draw to see a guy named Mr. Agassi in the quarterfinals, a match that I'm personally hoping will happen. <laughs> It'd be nice. Um, to, you know, I love playing Andre. Um, you know, I hit with him plenty of times in the past, and yeah, you know, he's he's one of the best players ever to play the game. Is and that not a guy that you looked up to a lot for when sure, you were growing up? For sure, you and Andre. But yeah. no. <laughs> keep it coming. Oh, no, but uh, you know, obviously he's a guy. He he plays a similar style to me from the baseline, and you know, I draw a lot of confidence from watching Andre play on all, all kinds of surfaces and what he's done on all surfaces, beating the specialists. Uh, you know, grass court, clay court, is hard court um, so it'll be fantastic you know I hope that I get the opportunity to play him in the yeah, quarters. One more thing I need to know from you you know we've been watching you play with so much success for the last couple of years are you ready to take the step are you ready to hold the big hardware? Oh, I hope so um, yeah I, I it's hard to say you know I, I've only started learning to play on grass and clay the last couple of years uh, at a professional well, level. We've been on tour the last couple yeah. of years. <laughs> well that's basically it. it we don't have uh, too many clay courts in Australia so yeah, I, I definitely feel more at home at the moment still on hard courts. Um, and after my US Open last year, I, I can't wait to get back there. But yeah, I feel like I've got an outside chance here. Um, I've, I've been in pretty good form on the grass so far this year. And as I said, I, you know, I've won a lot of Davis Cup matches in, in big matches as well. So hopefully that's going to hold me in good stead and you know, the courts start quickening up and hardening up for me you know, if I can get through the second week. It's funny, though. You read, you read newspaper articles and the expectations on a 20-year-old are so high because you'll see your name and then it says still without a Grand Slam title <laughs> like you should have racked up six or seven by now uh, uh, how about the weight of expectations yeah you know I try and block it out as much as possible I, I go out there and I, I give a hundred percent in every one of my matches every time I step on the court um, you know the best Grand Slam result I've had was the semis last year in Flushing Meadows um, you know I came close to Pete even though I did lose in straight there I lost in a couple of tiebreakers having set points and I, I learned a lot from that match and I think next time I get in that situation come you know the final four in a Grand Slam then I'm gonna be a lot more better because of that experience that I had um, when that time's gonna come who knows Leighton you and I know it's been a long day for you you want to get some rest but thanks a lot for coming thanks, up mate. and spending no some problem. time with uh, with me and thanks mate. and with your <laughs> well done young lad your, your idol <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> well said uh, you'll be we'll be back to watch more of uh, more of your friend Patrick Rafter's match from today in just a second Wimbledon on TNT beautiful Thursday night